What's up, people? Back here with another chill video. Um, this video is going to be different because, dang, my freaking shirt. Oh, wow. Uh, but, uh, yeah. Um, I just want to be raw and honest in this video. If you're someone who is trying to accomplish a goal, and this is for the people who tell you, um, you should get a job. Now, I'm not going to sit here and convince you and tell you, you you shouldn't get a job, okay? You should 100% keep your job. I mean, take it from someone who's an entrepreneur that has a business that's actually making money, but understands that he just has to keep his job because the income could be drastically different next year. And the year after that, I, I don't know what's going to happen. So I'm giving myself half a decade to kind of like, feel feel what's going on so i can stabilize and figure out better monetization options i'm a content creator but i own like several multiple channels several monetized facebook's um and several you know like snapchat accounts and stuff and i'm trying to build a media company and it's taking some time but uh this is my word of advice even if you're a content creator that's you know, I'm not, I don't have like millions of followers on each account, you know, so I'm not like big balling, but I'm making, you know, a decent living. Um, what I would do is keep your job because you're, I've seen my income go from all the way to zero, all the way back up. Um, and there's a lot of implications to that. Um, and this is for any entrepreneur because this can happen to any entrepreneur. This happened to a lot of entrepreneurs during COVID that lost everything, filed, had to file bankruptcy, stuff like that. Um, so, you know, for someone like me that kind of touched the stove, got hit a little bit, but was able to recover pretty quickly because I still did have a form of income that was more stable than content creation. I'm going to give you this word of advice. Keep your job, but not in a way that you might think I'm telling you to keep your job. This is what I mean. If you're an entrepreneur and keep you sh and you should keep your job. What I mean by that is keep your job but make it to where that job does not interfere with your endeavor now for me i chose to do door dashing and lift driving i was already doing that before because i had an it job before i went to lift and door dash full time because i was trying to build this thing i had a shitty car i didn't even have my own place to stay um i was still making these videos and i was getting nowhere um, I started making content on multiple platforms around, I think it was like 2021 and at the end of 2021, I had some videos blow up. I had some, uh, posts blow up on Facebook. I had some posts blow up on Snapchat. And next thing you know, I went from making like two to 3000 a month at the age of 25 to like, I think some months I was making 30 grand a month. It was insane. Um, but before that, and it's not, it's not even anywhere near that at all, uh, but I still do pretty decent. Like sometimes I hit like three or four, five grand a month. Sometimes it could go back all the way up to 10K. It just depends on what's actually going on. But uh, I learned early on, well, I know how to, I, 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 I call this channel Digital Brain because I kind of like, my brain started to understand each social media algorithm because I was on all of them. And then this thing was turned into a media company because we were outsourcing UGC ads. And I had other people that was doing those ads with me besides myself. And it started to scale like it was becoming like its own brand. Like, but it wasn't around about me anymore. I had went from this relatively unknown reaction YouTuber to kind of like, dang, he goes viral on Facebook. He goes viral on Snapchat you know, goes viral everywhere. Pretty much, I just became viral. But that that's not the point, though. Because um, anyone can go viral. And it's still hard to make money when you go viral. I don't care what anyone says. So in the context of what I'm doing in business, I decided that, okay, Lyft and Uber, DoorDash, that stuff gives me the flexibility to make a pretty decent income. Like, if you're driving, like, 12 hours a day or working 12 hours a day, You'll make 200 to 300 a day, depending if it's the weekdays or the or the weekends. You'll do decent. What you do is you take that income, you take that money, and you say, hey, 
that you know you put your money aside for taxes of course and then also it's the flexibility of it that makes it great and what i mean by the flexibility is i know i can make this amount for my rent and bills and then turn around and you know like still make pockets and windows of you know like you can build your own schedule and then i can come and work on you know brand deals i can work on video content i can work on learning animation um i'm using i can use some of that money to learn more about filmmaking and pay for like these mini classes and earn certificates so the cool thing about you know the it was just right sure and all that stuff just gave me the flexibility while giving me the stability at the same time while this thing over there may make more than what i'm doing sometimes the cool thing about it is that it just create and also it just keeps you like kind of going outside because what i'm doing is a lot of computer work too and i don't always want to be there and it allows me to pay to hire people like on upwork stuff like that so contractors it just allows me to build a lot faster too because if i was just relying on that income then i'd have to pay for taxes and then file my losses and there's a lot of different things but if i use lyft as like oh my living expenses and then maybe i take some savings from it after taxes and put it towards expanding my business like hiring another person which with a digital business it's very easy to scale because it's not labor intensive so there's not like huge labor costs maybe you hire some guy off upwork for ten dollars an hour for a week you know um and he only you know like that's 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 pretty decent compared to you know like someone who has to hire someone for a coffee shop and you got to pay them a whole salary you know what i mean or like you got to pay them like almost up to two thousand a month it just depends on what's going on so yeah it's um that's the thing it's you have to discern when it's the right time for you to leave your job because i look at it as a lot of people think that they want to get rich quick but they have no idea the implications of actually making money and i'm saying this from the bottom of my heart y'all really don't know what you want i've been there i've seen I, i've seen some stuff and this isn't to brag but I've seen people get miserable based on how they made the money and how they got there. And, and then also I've seen people who have gotten there really quickly, very fast, but they were either frauds or they were either just doing things not the right way and they crashed and burned and spent it all or whatever. It's something like that, something bad. And I'm like, I kind of want to go to slow and steady route. So I was like, yeah, there's a lot of cash on hand, but that has to be paid for taxes and we need to expand. And it's not a lot of money in the context if, if we have to shut down tomorrow. I'm always thinking about the inevitable of actually the business dying because of the nature of it and it's digital. It requires me to think of innovations. It requires me to think about, okay, what is each department? Like, you know, we have the gotcha department we have the Toka department. These are whole other channels and whole other niches where my face is not even shown, you know, like, and then I have to maintain the editors there. And then we have the recap channels. And then I have the Facebook stuff. And then we have Notion and those products. And then on top of that, we have me, just the personality for the React videos. And then, you know, it's like its own mini media company and it keeps growing every day, right? You know, we have our Facebook posts to go viral. We have our, you know, and those, but that doesn't mean like it's hard to sometimes get ad placement because you have huge competition. There's all types of other media companies out there. The way I'm growing is a little bit more different. So like I noticed that there's this trend of people that think they want it fast but I'm building slowly and learning my systems and processes before I go and do something stupid and it just crashes and burns. You know what I mean? So I'd rather take it slow and steady and, you know, I'm, I, 
I'm not in it. To, you know, I love what I'm doing. I'm not in it to be famous or anything like that. If my work is recognized, that's cool. But I'm not. It, I'm really just doing it for my own independent freedom. <laughs> I was like, I want to make videos for the rest of my life, and someday be able to raise a family off of my ability to do that. And that's just me trying to create the life I want, not necessarily trying to live for somebody else or to be notar, not you know, um, what's the word notarized or I, I don't know, um, be known or whatever. It, it's like, that's just a byproduct of that. If you do great work, but it's not necessarily a goal for mine. I knew that I was going to be making videos. I was playing with Vic. Actually, I have my camera back here. My original camera, one of my first cameras, one of my first cameras, right? I was holding this up as a little child. I knew I was always going to be doing videos. I, I knew it. I, I'm not saying I was like, knew it from the day I was born, practically. Oh man, my cover fell on the ground. Anyways, but yeah, um, I think it's important that if you love what you do too, but it can't be about the money. If you, that's why I say, and that's why we're going to go back to getting a job that matches what you're trying to do. And someone's trying to tell you to get a specific job, to make a certain income, you need a house, you need to get married by then. When are you going to have kids? Do not let those pressures, do not let what people think and what they say pressure you. I used to do this. I want you to hear this from the bottom of my heart. For someone who went through this, who was constantly at one point trying to get his parents' approval, his friends' approval, because they were trying to tell me to do these other things that I knew in my heart I didn't want. Like I just wanted to make videos. I shit you not. I just wanted to create stuff and build shit. That's who I was. I knew that's who I was. In in my soul, if none of this technology it existed, if it was the 1600s, 1800s, it probably would have been bad for black people, whatever. I knew that I would be doing something creative. I just so happened that I live in the 21st century and my creative outlet is making content and I love editing and I love technology and all those things come together but ultimately it all falls back into some form of creativity and art but it's through video and i knew this when i would like be nerding out and playing with apps like fx home and blender in my younger years and then playing around like learning animation drawing things i have a drawing table back there and it's been hard for me in life because, you know, a lot of people around me, they want me to maybe, you know, I'm not hanging with creatives. There's not as many in Tennessee, at least that's taking their lives and what they do seriously at the level. Like, I guess the way I could put it is people aren't taking it seriously to the point to where they're trying to make a living or they are making a living. But at the same time they can be condescending and be a certain way about the art versus me. I'm like, I have the business side of it, but at the same time, I just want to make cool shit and not care either. It's like, I have a balance between the two. Like I, it's like, uh, I still have dignity when it comes to money, but sometimes you got to make the money, you know, it's like, you know, and I think, some of the creators I've met in Tennessee, they're not doing exactly what I'm doing either. It's not a lot of video online creators that take it seriously in Tennessee in a way that I do. You know, a lot of them, and there is some maybe, but they're doing it in a business oriented sense where their entire goal <laughs> quite literally is to make money. And it's like the ones that are taking it seriously, just care about making a $10,000, $20,000, $30,000, $40,000 check every month. Where it's like, I've been there, done that. I don't care about that shit. If we make 40 grand, we're spending 40 grand on making an amazing animation video. Like we're not, we're not keeping no money. And that's what I'm saying. Like, I think, you know, of course, <laughs> within reasons of like, you got to make sure you take care of your other stuff. But what I'm saying is, I, it's either in Tennessee or that's where I live. 
there's this spectrum. Like these creators, they're like, oh, I just want to make money to live and flex and or like live because I'm a big boss and let me buy a house and car and no, no hate to it. I'm just in it for completely different reasons. You know, I want to build a media company. I want to do something different. So I'm not trying to I'm not trying to get the quick buck. I've been there. It I've and it wasn't even it still wasn't quick money to me because I went and spent it on infrastructure, you know, to get building. So to reinvest. So it's also that equilibrium of, you know, these other creators too they say they want to be creators but they don't even take it seriously like you're not even uploading once a week you know so that's what i'm dealing with these two different types of creators in tennessee all these creators want to be tiktokers and make money off affiliate links or products ugc whatever and without scaling to a proper place where they could actually have market control and not just be another scroll and then there's also another set of creators that they say they're creators, but they don't even take it serious. They don't post. They don't have any type of growth out of it. It's like a weird equilibrium. And here I am in the middle. I'm trying to do what fucking Mr. Beast did in North Carolina, but in my own way, you know. So that's why we expanded to the horror channels. I've been talking to people who are already successful in different niches, being friends with them, getting on editor's notes. Like I'm hanging with people deep in the industry they're coming on my videos they know what's happening because they know that i'm willing to eat ramen for like 18 months and like work a less than prestigious job to build what i'm trying to build because i the ego just isn't there the money the money is not the v the the money is just to keep us alive pretty much like you're like it's so easy to make enough money to pay rent and eat you know what i mean and pay the bills and then whatever's left over it doesn't bother us that we only have 500 to a thousand in savings or two thousand whatever what matters is okay we're in a good place the bills are paid each month we save what we have we keep growing because everyone's just trying to save 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 just so they can prepare for the future which is obvious you know but i don't i don't I, I i'm not one of those people that's like i think you just have to decide what type of person you have to be because you know one of my favorite books by uh entrepreneur that i like i mean he's going through a lot right now but elon musk right um you know so many people said I remember he was at the age, he was at this certain age, I don't know, maybe he's 30, maybe he's in his 20s, late 20s, mid 20s, whatever. And he built his first company and they could barely afford rent in an apartment in New York. Um, that's not my situation. I could pay my rent pretty easily if I just worked every day, you know, no problem. But um, it was different for him. He was like, he even meet his girlfriend. He could barely afford the rent at the time. And people were like telling him like, what about this? What about this? What about that? It's, it's, um, it's, it's fear base. And if you let fear get to you because someone is trying to tell you to get a specific job, you have to understand that that person is coming from a place of fear. Maybe they never, it's either they never followed their dreams or their dream was always to be in that type of career field. And there's no hate. There's never a hate on people who get education, who become doctors, lawyers, teachers, bus drivers, whoever they are. There's nothing wrong with that. You know, even sometimes the, a garbage man is smarter than you, you know, but I think if you have a specific goal in life that you know you feel in your bones is something something supersede intelligence listen to what i'm saying here man i'm fucking preaching take this shit to 2024 if you know that you're supposed to be doing a specific thing and you think it could be good for the world or you think that you could do something different for me i think this media company that i'm building will be great for the 21st century i think someone will look back and be like, man, that guy really didn't chase money. He lived in a fucking small ass apartment. He lived off of what he could live off of. I, 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 chicken and beans and rice go a long way, my guy. 
And I was like, in every single dollar, when I make $200 off a brand deal, $100 off a brand deal, $1,000 off a brand deal, I put that shit back in. I hire editors. I do not stop. And then on top of that, I keep lid driving. I keep pumping the money back in. If you want to know how I'm building so fast, it's because I refuse to. I just don't want to live that normal life. I, do, I want to do what most people won't do. Does not mean that I have any animal. I, I don't, I'm not one of those people that think I'm better than anybody. It's just that I'm after a specific goal. And I know what that goal takes. But And it's very 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 risky it's very risky it's it's hard some days i don't want to get up and script and make videos some days i don't want to sit down sit there practice animation sometimes i don't want to do this stuff but it's those moments and sometimes you need to downsize your life like there's people out there that probably end up going to work a regular job at a coffee shop or to go do just don't care what people think who cares if you go work at a barista go work at a barista so you can make only two thousand dollars a month enough to pay your rent enough to pay your bills enough to put a, a little bit back into your business but your focus is on your business because you're just working those eight hours a day maybe four days a week and those three day weekends now become where you start to shine because now you shining now because it's like you're in the in-between. You are doing what most people are scared to do. They won't even do that because they got to keep the bins. They got to keep the house. They got to keep the shit. And, you know, I understand some people got kids and that. But those even people with kids, they, they, they make it sacrifices like, oh, well, anytime that I'm off on Saturday and Sunday, I'm going to spend time with my kids and my wife, but I'm not going to go out with the boys. I'm not going to go out with the girls to get out. I'm going to focus on my growth or a new business. And maybe that's just three hours a night. Maybe that's just three hours on the weekends. But it's there's that sacrifice somewhere to work on it. But if you listen to what other people are saying all day, every day, it these people don't know what they're talking about. If someone is coming to you and saying, oh, you need a real job because they telling you that you shouldn't be working at Starbucks because you're trying to build your business. Don't even listen to them. If you can pay your rent and your bills or whatever, you could live and you OK. And at the end of the day, if they ain't pay your bills, why listen to them? Why? Why? I, bro, I'm saying this from the bottom of my heart because I went through this for like so many years. I was listening to people in my ear. They had me swinging all, all, I already got some form of ADHD. They were swinging me in every direction when I said, okay, enough. I don't care. You know, and I, I was raised in a family. And you know, with black families, I'm, I'm going to be real here. With black families, they like to compare you to the other black people because, you know, education and stuff like that we didn't always have those resources hell we didn't we still to this day don't have as many resources and not able to get into certain spaces because of you know maybe it's racism whatever but it is a different time it's the 21st century and things are different you can build a business from home you can be on the internet and the internet is democratized you can't and it's bigger than the corporate systems have ever been before so it's kind of hard to you know Oh, uh, you know, racism doesn't work as much as it used to. So it's like, it's, it, it, you know, in the black community, it's also another thing where we've always been measured on if we could play sports, if we're good in business, or we got a high education. And what car we drive, how we dress, are we like, you know, with the black lingo and stuff like that. And me, I'm just saying, hey, it's 21st century. Let me try to be one of the first black people to build a media company off of the backs of algorithms on social media. Let's see if it's worth a try. If not, I still walked away with a ton of skill sets. I can go get a job as an animator at a company or something if my shit doesn't work. But 
I think that I just stopped the idea of trying to live up to the standards because I have to create the standards. I have to meet the expectations that I built for myself. I can't have anyone else take me seriously if I'm trying to get validation from these people. They don't even know what I'm doing, you know? It's like, I can't even explain to them, you know? Um, and it's in, you, I can't even dude. I can't to people who are computer science majors. Sometimes I can't even explain to them cause they're trying to figure out how the hell I'm doing what I'm doing anyway. They're like, how do he, I post on Facebook out of time. I got a computer science major. Why can't I get a hundred likes on Facebook? Sorry, dude. I just know how to fucking do it. I don't know why <laughs> I named the channel digital brain for a reason. I'm trying to figure it out. Am I a different type of human or something? I know there's a ton of people like me out there. There's Mr. Beast. There's a bunch of other guys. We don't, I wonder if they even know what the fuck they're doing. I, I know what I'm doing to a certain extent, but not all the time. You know, I think I just see patterns. But that's not the whole point. The whole point is you have to think about it like this. Stop trying to seek that validation because I, I, I seeked it for a long time. And I'm, I'm just done with the comparison test. I'm doing what makes me happy, right? But at the same time, I'm looking at, okay, what if I could actually pull this off? If I pull this off, this will be huge. It won't be just huge. It will be wild because it will be the first time that, you know, you know, I might actually go through a video with you guys because actually let me text. I got to text somebody back. Hold on. So one video that inspired me to grow on Facebook, grow via all these different platforms besides YouTube, because um, my two platforms back then was just YouTube and Instagram pretty much, was a video about social media atomizing um, as creators. So what that means is, you know, the first wave we had, you know, smartphones apps stuff like oh i got someone calling me man uh, anyways make sure that you don't seek validation you go for what you want get a job and downsize if you have to but whatever you do don't give up on your dreams i gotta go i gotta take this call i'm sorry bye guys